Hello. Hello. And we are on testing. Saragon here, the world's most ear travel trimaximalist. The muso who has listened to more albums from the late 60s to the mid 80s than anyone on or offline. And um, are we on? Okay. I hear myself. Yes. Okay. Yes, Zaragon, the world's most ear travel trimaximalist. I have assimilated nearly 18,000 albums from around the world from the Trimax era spanning psychedelia to sophistopop with all the various styles and permutations of rock, jazz, and soul in between. Um, I have listened to these albums like multiple times, assimilated them like track by track. And f f over for the last 16 years, I have shared my archivalism and my journey on rate your music with um, the most developed directory on that whole database with um, you can see here song rankings and my system of ranking and what I listen to in a song um, to deem it either a ruby or a sapphire and um, my site guide for the eras and you can click these on for year by year directories of albums or scroll down for those complete with holistic blurbs of the global music scene on a year by year basis between 1966 anyway and 19 well to the end of the 80s and with 1967 to 1985 being the highlighted uh, time frame and um, upwards of like um, hundreds of albums from each of those years, all fully um, like gem mined and, and everything for thousands of song recommendations when you want to explore an album. And also us in uh, uh, guides to directories on a, on a regional or in sometimes national uh, basis. International site map right here and then the English music directory right here. Um, Numerical A to Z and um, Soft Soul, the band that we are uh, profiling tonight, are an S band, so they would be right here, and the page is right here, and they are on page five. And here's their, well, their three album discography anyway, with some of the uh, short player sides added right below. And uh, you can see they did one album that, um, in the ears of this um, well traveled listener, is Ruby Packed. And we'll be going into the details of that and um, their second album and third album. And along with many other artists, you can explore that at your own leisure. And um, five years ago, I um, took all of my knowledge, all of my expertise in jazz, rock and soul from around the world from the late 60s to the mid 80s to create a new database, Jazz Rock Soul. It is a developing database. It is the internet's first um, holistic database that looks that uh, re-examines the music from a holistic objective point of view, free of the toxic and outdated narrative biases of um, the music critics of that era and all the uh, generalist tropes that have been used as kind of like easy um, shorthand ever since then. Um, and so it's a site where we um, go through each artist on an album by album, year by year basis uh, for the time frame in question and just um, stick to the facts and pure um, musical nuts and bolts of their work and um, free of gossip, innuendo, or narrative conjecture. And um, for the last two months, I have been streaming finished um, pages on legacy artists, most, most of them from England, um, starting um, like with the page on The Who, um, the 2600 word article on them and um, as well as General Giant, um, Renaissance, Chicago, Electric Light Orchestra, Camel, Japan last week uh, did Curved Air and this week doing Soft Cell and going to be going through the article, much of it uh, just written within the last few days and um, 
doing the final proofread here tonight and then putting it on the front page once the stream is over. Um, but for now, you can find it. You can uh, click right to it and read along with me in the link right under the video screen. Or you can go um, this way. This is how the site is organized. Um, artists and artists are grouped by region and then under region you go to the nation and um, soft cell are an English band and so we would go here to British Isles England and that brings us to the directory of English artists and we can scroll down to S the S cluster or we can just simply hit the S right here and then hit the top button to go right back here to go to another letter but we're in S now. South Cell are an SO band, so um, as you can see, going alphabetically from SA, South Cell are right down. South Cell are kind of in the middle somewhere, so right here, between Soft Boys and Soft Machine. And here we go. And I will be choosing a better, yeah, looking for a better main photo for them, in probably like a photo collage. But um, like um, all articles on Jazz Rock Soul, all um, completed like in alpha mode anyway, there's um, an opening abstract that summarizes their career with uh, the basic details, um, followed by um, a brief rundown of the members, their credits, and um, this being a duel, of course, so that's pretty brief. Then a background on, on the act, how they formed, and then going on a release by release thing. And um, and going into detail, album and song details from there on out. And um, I am gonna be um, reading this in Chrome and doing the live edits as I read here. Um, in Firefox, and this article is currently uh, almost um, almost 6,300 words. Okay, so let's begin. Soft Cell was an English electropop duo from Leeds, composed of singer-lyricist Mark Almond and keyboardist-programmer Dave Ball. They cut multiple singles in advance of their 1981 debut album, Non-Stop non Erotic Cabaret, which spawned the international hit Tainted Love and the club staples Bedsitter and Sex Dwarf. A visual accompaniment to the album, Non-Stop Exotic Video Show, exhibits Almond's theatrical flair in a sequence of song clips. Soft Cell had further hits with the 1982 singles Torch and What. Musically, they embraced cabaret and experimental sounds on their 1983 second album, The Art of Falling Apart, a collection of dark narrative numbers. Almond moonlighted in Mark and the Mamas, Mambas and resumed with Ball for the early 1984 release, This Last Night in Sodom, a set of brisk, layered, lyrically edgy tracks. Almond then launched a successful solo career. Soft Cell reunited in the new millennium for the 2002 disc, Cruelty Without Be Beauty. And then basically there you have it, Mark Almond vocals, Dave Ball, keyboard, synthesizers, drum programming, and further instruments on the um, final album. Well, on, on this last night in Sodom. Okay. Background. Mark Almond and Dave Ball met at Leeds Polytechnic, where they formed Soft Cell in 1978. Almond was a performance art major who had already staged several the uh, theater pieces, including one, Zazu, that got reviewed in the Yorkshire Evening Post. Ball had assembled a makeshift studio in the fine arts department where he kept a Korg DV800 duophonic synthesizer, a stylophone, and a drum machine. Um, let's see, yeah. One day, as Almond passed the studio, he heard the strange sounds Ball was creating and introduced himself to the young keyboardist. Ball accepted Almond's invitation to contribute music to an upcoming theater piece. Within months, they were collaborating on art pop songs with Almond penning lyrics and Ball composing music. 
Between 1978 and 1980, they recorded numerous demos that were later released on the compilations Science Friction Stories and The Bedsit Tapes. Mutant Moments. In 1980, Soft Cell self-issued the EP Mutant Moments on one press, a Big Frock record. It features four originals, Potential, L-O-V-E Feelings, Metro MRX, and Frustration. Sound-wise, Mutant Moments echoes then-recent minimal synth recordings by Tuxedo Moon, No Tears, their 1978 EP, and, and the 1979 follow-up to that, too. Uh, Charisma, uh, the Italian uh, duo, a Chinese restaurant, and um, Lear Rental, The Bridge. Potential fades in with swooping and beaming effects amid engine sounds set to an up-tempo beat box rhythm with a two-note electro bass pattern. Um, e C C E C C. The lyrics imagine the potential of each random passerby on a daily commute. Love Feelings is a medium slow number in uh, D sharp in D sharp. Uh, get back to that. I usually I, I, I usually don't say D sharp. I usually say uh, E flat um, or C sharp with a synth bass pattern set to a bossa nova beatbox rhythm. Yeah, um, the uh, it doesn't necessarily sound bossa nova per se, but it's a very similar pattern to the one used in Hiroshima Monomore by Ultravox, which um, was uh, described by, which was revealed by uh, their drummer, Warren Can as um, a bossa nova setting, ry rhythm setting on an early beatbox. Um, and I, I've heard that pattern in, in several other uses of, of the beatbox from that, that era. Which was Almond in torch ballad mode. Okay, I must have rewritten the sentence. Yeah, I, I know I was writing these on like Saturday night, really. Um, okay, um, and haven't had time to proofread them yet. Reworded that sentence and restructured it. And, okay, almond. Um, Almond, in torch ballad mode, sings from the point of view of a cyborg being introduced to human emotions. His voice, his voice is rendered ghostly amid the song's frosty synth line. In torch ballad mode, sings from the point of view of a cyborg. Okay, Metro MRX is a medium uptempo number with a three-note fuzzy synth pattern. Um, e flat, A flat, A A F, um, A F, A flat, A flat. Uh, I I. Okay, that D no. No, 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 C sharp. Uh, I don't, I, God, I must have been tired. I don't use C, I don't use D, D sharp. Um, the lyrics concern a mutant businessman who embodies metropolitan perfection. Frustration is a medium slow number with a brittle synth pattern in G minor with punctuated thirds. So that would be like um, punctuated uh, B flat notes. G minor, G minor, G minor, with a whip cracking rhythmic effect. Almond, in a remote yet vituperative tone, uh, sings from the point of view of an ordinary man's dissatisfaction in life, despite having achieved the picture perfect suburban ideal. 
The song breaks down at the end with piercing sounds amid the call and response between Amon's cries of, I want to die, and Ball's deadpan words, an ordinary bloke. Mutant Moments was financed by, Ball, by Ball's mother and pressed in a quantity of 2,000 copies. An implied third member, Stephen Griffin, is credited on the handmade sleeve art with visuals. Is credited... is credited with visuals on the handmade sleeve art. Almond is credited with synthetic scratch in addition to vocals. Okay, I guess I am using full quote, not, um, yeah, because it literally is what, what he's credited with. It's not just sort of implied. Um, 1981, in January 1981, um, okay, there, there might be um, quite a bit of uh, spelling corrections as I go along, proofreading this out loud for the first time. In 1981, okay, in January 1981, the soft cell track The Girl with the Patent Leather Face appeared on Some Bizarre Album, a multi-artist comp containing tracks by 12 then unsigned electronic bands, including B-Movie, Blamange, Depeche Mode, and The The. The comp appeared on Phonogram's post-punk subsidiary, Some Bizarre. Soft sells home for all subsequent UK releases. The Girl with the Patent Leather Face opens with fuzzy synth sustain in G minor and echoing imitation rotor sounds. An up-tempo beatbox triggers the verses, a two-note pattern, um, C minor, C minor, C minor, A, A, A <clears throat> a flat where Amon sings deadpan about the titular subject an insular character who's a psychopathic mental case and a target for the freaks and creeps who takes to mutant bars and tampers with machinery in a melodramatic tone Amon describes her as a two-faced baby shiny shiny one line, other beauties crash their cars, invokes crash fetishism. Uh. The topic, uh, the topic, oh, oh, that's where it messed up. Those definite articles. Invokes crash fetish. Fetishism, the topic of the 1978 electro-punk single Warm Leatherette by The Normal, a.k.a. Daniel Miller, who took inspiration from the 1973 J.G. Uh, Ballard novel Crash. A Man Could Get Lost. Soft Cell issued their first proper single, A Man Could Get Lost, backed with memorabilia, in March 1981. Simultaneously, the flip was extended for the 12-inch release, Memorabilia, um, a near eight-minute track, backed with Persuasion, or around the same um, time length. As their songs found favor among DJs on London's Blitz scene, Soft Cell entered Envision's, London's Envision Studios to record their first album. Excuse me. A Man Could Get Lost is a mid-tempo number with a Motown beatbox pattern. I don't know if that what the official name of the setting they used was, if there was one, but um, it had it, it kind of approximates a, a Motown beat. Um, simulated, uh, which I describe here as a simulated tambourine and kick drum. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, common on, on 60s Motown recordings. And a three key synth progression. Um, D minor, D minor, C, G. With staccato overlays. Amen, a uh, double tracked, sings of city life and its distractions. From eye candy, I like the decor, glass, dummies, neon, to costly temptations, I like the products, and idle interactions, hi dear, by dear. Memorabilia is a medium up tempo vamp in um, 
B flat with a synth bass ostinato injected with bleeping sounds set to a clicking dance beat. Almond deadpans rapid fire call outs to a lost love that he remembers through photographs, snowstorms, and keychains. Persuasion is a minimal medium up is a minimal medium up tempo number with half sung revelations, I have learned my limitations and commands by by more now, carried by a sprinting bass figure in A minor. Almond is flanked throughout the piece by haunted distant screams. After a swell of clatter and noise, the track fades out on a lengthy synth drone. Tainted Love. On July 17, 1981, Soft Cell released Tainted Love, a cover of the Soul Pop Chestnut written by Ed Cobb, um, once of the four preps, and first recorded by American singer, singer Gloria Jones as the B-side to her 1964 single, My Bad Boy's Coming Home. Its popularity on the UK northern soul scene prompted Jones to re-record the song in 1976. While the original version is an up-tempo stack style number in C, Soft Cell's cover has a mid-paced arrangement composed of an arching synth bass line between a piping three-note pattern in G minor. Almond gives sassy delivery um, and then the synth bass figure boom, 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 boom. Amon gives sassy delivery of the opening salvo. Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. And brims with pained emotion on the airy bridge. Once I ran to you, I ran, now I run from you. In the video, Amon plays Apollo in a hybrid Victorian ancient Greek setting where Ball arrives as a golfer or a cricketer. Um, Soft Cell's Tainted Love is backed with a cover of the Motown classic Where Did Our Love Go, the 1964 Holland Dozier Holland composition popularized by the Supremes, who scored their first Billboard number one with the song. The single also appeared on 12-inch with the two songs paired as a medley on side A, backed with Tainted Dub, a rhythmic extension of the medley, instrumental apart from echoing keywords. Tainted Love reached number one on the UK singles chart and also topped the charts in Australia, Belgium, Canada, South Africa, and West Germany. It also reached the top five in Austria, France, Ireland, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Soft Cell mimed the song on the August 13, 1981 broadcast of the BBC music program Top of the Pops, which re-aired their segment a fortnight later on um, August 27th and on the two subsequent broadcasts. Almond's signature look, buffoned hair, eyeliner, bracelets, cap sleeveless tops, proved influential on the year's fashions. Nonstop Erotic Cabaret. Soft Cell released their debut album, Nonstop Erotic Cabaret, on November 27, 1981, on Some Bazaar. It features Tainted Love and nine Almond Ball originals that range from buoyant dance numbers like Frustration and Bedsitter to emotional ballads such as Youth and Say Hello, Wave Goodbye, with forays into burlesque such as um, Entertain Me and Secret Life and dark, lurid territory, namely uh, CD films. Songs like Sex Dwarf and Chips on My Shoulder offer high-tech solutions for the post-disco club scene. Each track, barring ships, appears in the subsequent VHS and Betamax release, Soft Cell's Nonstop Exotic Video Show, directed by emerging filmmaker Tim Pope. Um, and here's the uh, album cover, of course. Bring that up for later reference. Frustration at... Um, four minutes 12 seconds rearranges the mutant moments track as a clear as i think i meant to say clean yeah I meant to say clean as a clean polished or uh maybe that's kind of redundant i mean i mean it's it, it's got much more of a production feel uh um, in contrast to the very kind of brittle, remote, um, lo-fi sound of the EP. Um, eh, I'll leave it there. Maybe one, one descriptor too many, I don't know. One. 
Um, as a clean, polished, up-tempo da da dance track in D minor with prominent electronic percussion and bell tone key accents. In the video, Ball plays the suburban middle-aged dollard characterized in the lyrics. Almond, the trickster, flashes in and out of the scene as an oblivious, ill-stricken Ball pushes a lawnmower until he falls to the ground. Presumed dead, he's whisked away by pallbearers as Almond narrates the madness. Once buried, Paul awakes inside his coffin. CD Films at over five minutes is a mid-tempo nighttime number with a throbbing four-note bass line rooted in D minor set to a sliding disco hi-hat beat. The lyrics flash details of the pick flash details of a pickup scenario in London's red light district. Almond trades the cooing lines getting to know you, getting to know you getting to like you with Cindy Ecstasy, a Brooklyn seamstress who became Soft Cell's third wheel. The dark vibe of the song is colored with hissing vibra slap and fluttering street corner clarinet. In the CD Films video, Ball drives Ball drives a convertible. <sighs> wow. Okay. Um. Ball drives a convertible cab through Soho while Almond, the camera wielding passenger, spots street walking Cindy. He invites her in and they cozy up to his flat, where. So, where Silhouetted, um, no, that didn't quite feel. Okay, let's clear there. Um, where silhouetted frolic ensues while Ball looks on from behind his wheel. Cindy reappears, hands Ball the tape, and walks on as he drives off. Youth at over th at three minutes fifteen seconds is a slow emotional ballad with frosty synth strings, primarily in D minor, on a sparse snare beat. Amen, in a pained confessional tone, sings of lost youth and haunting memories of estranged loved ones, slowing on the ambiguous chorus line, You sleep in a deep, deep sleep, beauty is skin deep. The video, is the video is a saturated monochrome zoom-in of Almond, who lip-syncs amid facial green screen footage of childhood events. Sex Dwarf at 5 minutes 15 seconds is a fast number with a snapping rhythm track and a spiraling synth line that shifts between five keys. Um, D, D, B flat, C, G, F. Um, a spiraling synth line. Do new 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 new. The narrator, portrayed by Amon in a sinister tone, is a pimp who lures club girls into bondage films. Isn't it nice? Sugar and spice, luring disco dollies to a life of vice. I can make a film and make you my star. You'll be a natural the way you are. I would like you on a long black leash. I will parade you down the high streets. Sex Dwarf has two videos. Um, parade you down the yeah that that's also kind of like Dom, Dom scenarios like I I get like like BDSM films and and like Dom acts and such Dom routine public Dom routines. Sex Dwarf has two video vi videos. The first is a softcore romp inside a sex chamber where Almond riffs over a naked table tied female while Ball powers a chainsaw. Um, a okay, uh, use the word romp twice. Uh, a romp ensues where leather clad participants roll around in cleaved meat from Ball's hanging carcasses. Some Bazaar pulled this video in favor of a montage clip included in Exotic Video Show. Yeah, the, the original video is currently up on um, Reddit. I don't, I don't know what, what uh, video host it was uploaded to. I, I watched it on Reddit.
Yeah, I saw it for the first time over the weekend, actually. Um, oh, by the way, I have no memory of, so of, of any soft cell videos from, from the early days of MTV. And I was watching MTV every day after school, um, uh, like from like January of 1982 to like, oh, late 1985, early 1986. I, I would watch like three hours of MTV a day from like age like eight and a half to age... Um, to just after I turned 13 and um, and I uh, yeah I don't recall them playing any uh, well that video would have been out of the question but I, I don't recall uh, Tainted Love or or Bedsitter any of those clips gain, gain MTV play and, and I remember I remember the, those few occasions where they aired Ultravox you know where they aired altered images um, and those made profound early impressions on me um, I can only imagine the kind of impression Mark Allman may have had on me, but I, I've had other people concur that that soft cell seemed to have been left off of MTV's um, rotation for whatever reason. Um, Entertain Me, um, three and a half minutes, presents Almond as a soured master of ceremonies who turns the table on his audience, pouting, Entertain Me, I'm blank as can be, to an up-tempo vamp in C minor. The video, C minor, C minor. The video starts with a close zoom in on Almond's face as he sings the unaccompanied opening lines, then pans out to a circus soundstage performance with jugglers, fire dancers, ballerinas, and usherettes. Multiple times, the camera pans in on Ball, who leans sideways above his keyboard as the credits roll, this being the opening number on the exotic video show. Cindy Ecstasy appears as one of the two fishnetted backing singers. Chips on My Shoulder, um, Four Minutes, is a fast song with a throbbing bass line in D, with whistles and rattling sundries that part for a vibrating synth tone over a sliding hi-hat beat. Amen, flanked by rowdy young voices, sings of resentment and guilt from, the privile from a privileged vantage point. Bedsitter, Three and a Half Minutes, is an up-tempo number with a two-chord introduction um, <clears throat> Um, da, A minor, da, 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 bomb, bomb, G, G, over a mixed rhythmic figure, uh, clicking beatbox and organic snare beat. The song's synth bass pattern is overlaid with mixed motifs, metallic, both metallic and treble, bomb, bomb, like that, and sampled hand claps. The lyrics concern Sunday morning blues with reflections on the night before. Almond gets jubilant on the chorus amid a winding key pattern. Um, D, E, C, D, but comes back down in sorrow. And now I'm all alone in Bedset Land, my only home. The Bedsitter video starts with Almond bedded under butterfly quilting with matching pajamas and wallpaper, intercut with nighttime street footage of Ball. The two mime in a spiraled green screen setting first on the first chorus as the scenes unfold. 
On the second chorus, Almond, now dressed dressed in his kitchen, or now um clo now in his kitchen fully dressed. It, that that makes it sound like like he's he's wearing his kitchen. Um, now um. Now in his kitchen, fully clothed. Give spin rounds to the lens for each separate word in the first line. Okay, on the second chorus, Almond gives spin rounds to the lens for each separate word in the first line. Dancing, laughing, drinking, loving. And if you've seen the video, you know exactly what I'm referring to, where he like spins round, um, like like it, there's a close up on his face. It, it's 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 just a perfect almond moment. It's just like a quintessential scene of his. Kind of kind of like a it, it's it's like the ultimate like bedroom diva kind of kind of routine. Um, Secret Life, um, three and a half minutes, is a jaunty mid-tempo number with a 2-4 tambourine beat and a musical piano motif that wiggles downward from um, B, F. The lyrics concern a high-profile two-timer who's being blackmailed by someone with a client list. He confronts this individual on the bridge. I'll give you anything, anything to shut you up. Why do you hate me so much? What, what have I ever done to you but leave you? Yeah, somewhat of confusing lines, but you have to kind of really. Yeah, he's he always all he does is just avoid this person. This person's just kind of after him. He then indicates the extremes he might take, such as change my sex, my hair, to avoid exposure. In the Secret Life video, soft cell mime in a pink and teal lit padded cell studio setup where a Vulcan browed almond gesticulates as ball plays on. Say hello, wave goodbye at um, five minutes, 24 seconds as a torch ballad set to a tambourine beat with a mid-tempo synth bass line overlaid with neon tone synths and C with piping thirds. The lyrics concern a straight-laced businessman who struggles to be stoic as he breaks things off with a cocktail waitress at the Pink Flamingo. In the video, Ball plays the protagonist while Almond lip syncs his self-agonized uh, while Almond lip syncs his agonized self-reflections on the club stage, swelling into diva mode with a glowing, um, yeah, this is a pretty convoluted sentence, I must admit. Um, Almond lips, okay, uh, Ball plays the protagonist while Almond lip syncs his self, why, why do I keep reading it that way? In the video, Ball plays the protagonist while Almond lip syncs Ball's, while, um, it's because basically um, Almond is singing the thoughts that the feelings that Ball is experiencing. Ball, Ball is playing like the, you know, the character that, that, that Almond is narrating. So that's, Ball plays the protagonist while Almond lip syncs his agonized self-reflections on the club stage. You have to reword that. While, while Almond, um, lip syncs the characters, um, While Amen lip syncs the man's ah. 
I should or it lip syncs the um, there. I, I don't need to refer it back to um, who he's singing on behalf of. I'll just say Ball plays the protagonist while Amin lip syncs the lyrical self um, the lyrical self reflections on the club stage. Okay, I think I got it now. Yeah, in the video, Ball plays the protagonist while Amin lip syncs the lyrical self reflections. Um, from the club stage. Swelling into diva mode with a glowing glance as he croons, Take a look at my face for the last time. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful moment in the video. Yeah, and, that, and, and his, the way his, his face kind of lights up all ivory under the stage light as he looks straight, as he like takes off those sunglasses and looks straight at, straight at the lens. Yeah, it's, it's another one of his perfect diva moments. Yeah, yeah he, he brought something very unique to the rock scene. That he just, just brought elements into the rock scene that hadn't been done by a front man before. Sessions... Um, Sessions took place between late 19... Oh, oh and I was wondering, I, I couldn't quite uh, determine whether that was Cindy Ecstasy in the photos that are in that video. Um, there, there's like a photo of Amon next to some chick, that uh, ne next to a young woman who um, I think was either her or possibly it was uh, Ginny. More on, more on that person a bit later haven't introduced her yet. Sessions took place between late 1980 and mid-1981 at Edvision, at Edvision and the duo's own Camden Cell facility. Nonstop erotic cabaret was produced by Mike Thorne, a sound man on late 70s albums by Griffin, uh, Treason, The Shirts, their first two, anyway, self-titled in Streetlight Shine, Soft Machine, yeah, uh, their double live album, Alive and Well in Paris, and Wire, um, all three of their their uh, albums on EMI, uh, on, on Harvest, uh, name, uh, including uh, Chairs Missing. More recently, he worked with Berlin Blondes, uh, a Scottish um, synth combo, kind of minimal synth combo, and one-time Marshall Hain songstress Kit Hain. The engineer on this and subsequent soft cell recordings, American sound man Don Wershbaugh, also worked on recent titles by Balance, Carolyn Mass, Donna Washington, Kazumi Watanabe, and New England. Thorne loaned Soft Cell his NED uh, Synclavier, an advanced digital sampling synthesizer beyond the means of the group's contemporaries. Yeah, um, I, a Ball quoted like a, a six-figure price on it, going rate on that instrument at the time. So it's not something like bands, like um, other bands that didn't have such a such a connection within the industry. Like I, I don't know, perhaps like like some of their contemporaries could have afforded. Um, Hain, um, even some of the the affluent acts. I mean, I, I guess uh, Ball is also quoted as saying that that Don was uh, contacted him around that time, saying, "How did you produce some of those sounds?" Yeah. Um, Hain loaned them her Roland drum machine. Amon and Ball did the Camden Cell recordings on a Revox tape recorder. Select numbers feature backing vocals by the Vicious Pink Phenomena, a Leeds duo, Brian Moss and Josie Warden, that cut three mid-80s Parlophone singles as Vicious Pink. And so that, that kind of like the numbers like, like Entertain Me and such that have like backing. Um, readest Dave Tafani guests on saxophone on the track Frustration and clarinet on CD films. Tafani's contemporary credits include 1980 to 82 titles by Aretha Franklin, uh, the Brooklyn Bronx and Queens Band, Candy Staten, Change, Chaka Khan, Donald Fagan, Linda Clifford, and T Connection. Photographer Peter Ashworth took the nonstop erotic cover image, which shows the blue lit duo in leather jackets under neon signs, the name and title, um, against a vinyl backdrop. Yeah, um, blue lit neon signs. 
Um, I take that to be like a vinyl backdrop anyway. Yeah. Maybe it, or maybe it's cellophane. I should say cellophane. Um, Almond shaded stuffs an undetermined paper belonging into his coat while Ball appears with a newly cultivated mustache. Yeah, what's that he's stashing right there? Yeah, and Ball cultivating the mustache look just like a midge or, or the guy in a yellow. Like, kind of like becoming like a like a trend where at least one member of a, of a synth combo had like a, well, kind of like a retro kind of pent, like thin mustache. Um, the back cover shows credits beside a photo of a, of a Soho peep show alley, peep parlor alley, with a photo of, or I could just say Soho's red light district. Ashworth also photographed 1980 to 81 sleeves for Adam and the Ants, Kings of the Wild Frontier, Central Line, Eurythmics, In the Garden, their first album, their first and finest. Um, kind of very um, ethereal, that album. Yeah. Ethereal, psychedelic, uh, electropop. Godly and Cream, Original Mirrors, Peter Godwin, Ronnie, and Visage, they're self-titled. Bedsitter accompanied the album as a second single, backed with Facility Girls, a slow number with faint numinesque synth sustain and a joy division-like rhythmic lurch, overlaid with vibe tones and lyrics about a daytime secretary who holds out hope for her ghosting suitor. Yeah, that joy division beat pattern, I'm wondering if there's a more specific name for it, that kind of... um. That kind of like tribal-esque sort of patterning that that sort of kind of like roams around the, the toms in kind of a sort of stumbling sort of way. I, I, I don't know if there's a specific name for it. Drop a comment if you know. Um, it became like often used in post-punk. Soft Cell mimed Bedsetter on the November 19th, 1981 broadcast of Top of the Pops, which re-aired their segment a fortnight later. It reached number four in the UK singles chart. Nonstop Erotic Cabaret reached number five on the UK albums chart and peaked at number two in Canada. Good going, Canada. You placed it even higher than, than the UK. I, yeah, Canada could be a really hip market in certain places. Sire released the album in the U.S. where it climbed to number 22 on the Billboard 200. I'm, not, I'm surprised by their placements on the on Billboard around this time, considering that 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 um, MTV didn't play that at the time. I, I got to admit, I the first time I heard about Soft Cell was in the spring of 1987 when I was in a bookstore, when I, I, I was in a bookstore in Boston and it came on and I was thinking, who is this? It, the, the songs, the songs I was hearing kind of reminded me of like mid period Cure and Echo and the Bunnymen, like 83 era, like when they were using percuss, percussive sounds like, uh, like, well, like songs like, like Never Stop and Love Cats, that, that, that period of, of those bands and the girl behind the counter told me uh it's soft cell the art of falling apart yeah. in january 1982 soft cell lifted say hello wave goodbye as the album's third single backed with an instrumental version of the song they mimed it on the february 4th broadcast of top of the pops which re-aired the segment two weeks later the song reached number three on the uk singles chart 1982 Tainted Love entered the Billboard Hot 100 in January 1982 and began its slow climb to a summer peak position of number eight. It spent a then unsurpassed 43 weeks on the Hot 100, beating the record of Paul Davis and his 1977 single, I Go Crazy, which spent 40 weeks between uh, August 77 and uh, May of 78. 
Torch. <coughs> in May 1982, Soft Cell released Torch, a standalone single backed with Insecure Me, a medium up-tempo dance number with a plunging synth bass pattern rooted in G minor and lyrics about the pressures of stardom. Torch begins with a seven-note trumpet riff on a whole tone drop. Um, D, C. It's a mid-tempo. Um, no, 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 no. It's a mid-tempo update of the late 50s jazz pop ballad set to a clicking dance beat. The lyrics concern a lounge diva song where sounds form a bond between two people. Almond shifts perspective from I to the he addressed in her song. Yeah, it was a bit confusing. Yeah. First he's he's singing he's singing from you know his point of view and then as he gets into her song um, from his perspective about the the diva and then once he gets into her song and describes the the world of her song he he sings um about the the man that she's he he goes back and forth between singing about her and and the man that she's addressing in the song it resolves with a four-line stanza on the lady's allure. See her eyes, they are bright tonight, which she replicates. See my eyes. Cindy Ecstasy sings the female part in an English accent. Yeah, I was surprised by that, that, it, that it's, they credit her, it's, you know, it's the same, same as uh, what you hear on, um, because in the video she doesn't look anything like she does in in, um, in, in the video to CD films. Torch, okay. In the Torch video, soft cell cavort in a lavender lit setting amid walls decked in purple musical notes and uh, champagne glasses. As Almond makes his way to the diva, Cindy. Uh, I didn't. I thought I edited that. I thought I already already took that out because I, eventually I, earlier I was I was going to say something about um, I was I was first going to say as um, I, I was for yeah in the original structure of that sentence I was going to comment on on how Ball is miming on the trumpet but um, as it turned out as the way things got structured I didn't actually introduce the trumpeter until the art of falling apart section so scratch that i credit him down down there once i um yeah because i wrote that part on the uh art on the art of falling apart section the credit section before i filled this torch section out um Almond makes his way to the diva, Cindy, who stands on a round podium before a vintage microphone in a blue sequin gown and black updo. The camera pans behind her and gradually zooms toward Mark as he sings to her. The moment she takes her lead, the camera cuts to her zoomed-in face, then pans out, showing her bald with a dove in hand. Yeah, I don't know what that, like, change was really for. She, like with with um hair and then without it I, and she appears to have i think she's like browless in the video yeah um soft cell mimed torch on a lavender lit stage for the may 27th broadcast of top of the pops which aired their segment in a block with chart hits by japan cantonese boy duran duran hungry like the wolf madness house of fun and fun boy 3 the telephone always rings cindy ecstasy appears alongside almond in opera gloves and a 40 style updo yeah and uh, here they are uh, there's some really good quality uploads of that top of the pop segment on youtube i like her look in this top of the pops broadcast much better than her look in the video um yeah yeah she looks really really ravishing in that um yeah i don't know what the the bald thing was really for 
Yeah, there, there she lo- she um, re- resumes kind of the uh, the CD films look. Torch peaked at number two on the UK singles chart and went top ten in Belgium and Ireland. The singles picture slave, designed by ongoing soft cell visual artist Hugh F- Hugh Feather, caricatures Cindy as she appears in the video, which begins with fast fast motion footage of the sketch in progress. Top of the Pops re-aired the song on the Christmas 82 broadcast, along with the year's biggest hits, including songs by Culture Club, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me, Dionne Warwick, Heartbreaker, Haircut 100, Love Plus One, and Musical Youth, Past the Duchy. Nonstop Ecstatic Dancing in June 1982, Soft Cell issued Nonstop Ecstatic Dancing, an EP with one new cover, What? And remixes of A Man Could Get Lost, Sex Dwarf, Chips on My Shoulder, and two prior B-sides, Memorabilia and Where Did Our Love Go? Soft Cell issued... What is a song by American pianist arranger H.P. Barnum? Uh, known for known himself for El Pisa and Nut Rocker, that was first recorded in 1964 by teen comedic actress Belinda Marx, daughter of Groucho Marx. Um, or I could like give him more of a daughter of slapstick legend. Uh, daughter, uh, yeah, I should. Daughter of slapstick legend Groucho Marx. Another teen Hollywood actress, Judy Street, recorded a second version as the B-side of her 1968 single, You Turn Me On. This version later gained cult status on the Northern Soul Circuit. Street's version is a medium uptempo number in B-flat with an arching verse in a compound meter. Um... Yeah, which I count out as seven plus three plus ten. Down, 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 and a brassy, vibe-sprinkled Motown arrangement. Soft Cell transpose what to a keyboard arrangement in G with the same tempo and sixties vibe, replete with synth bass and a programmed rhythm track. Ball approximates key touches of Street's version, such as the bell tones and tambourine pace. Despite its jovial tone, what is a heartbroken plea to a departed lover? In the video, soft cell mime in a chess pattern studio with a Marilyn Monroe lookalike on keyboards. Various 60s references appear throughout the clip. Pop art, such as pop art wall decorations, including a, like comic lettering and explosion, uh, like uh, comic book explosion illustrations. Two go-go dancers in Day Still inspired mod dresses and a cameo by retro girl group singer Mary Wilson. Memorabilia is a shortened remix of the 1981 B-side with faint fluttering trumpet and double-layered percussion, acoustic and electric drums with rattling sundries. Midway, Cindy Ecstasy raps five seductive stanzas, including one that inserts Soft Cell's titles, I may be, stop, I may be soft, I made the top, I like my cabaret nonstop, I, I may be erotic, I may be ecstatic, with it down on your floor in your attic. Yeah, inserting the, the titles of, of the album, the EP, and such. Um, in the memorabilia video, Amon sings to the, to the lens as a holograph on a green screen of jump-cut random footage. Cindy, decked in an Edwardian hat and pearl necklace, wraps bedroom-eyed into the lens, delivering salacious lines like, you take it low or shut our eyes and let our love materialize. And I don't mean love on a chocolate box. I mean the love that really rocks. I, I say, I say, call me baby, the good time lady. Just look at me and it's easy, easy to see why they call me Cindy Ecstasy. I didn't get all the cadence down, but... Sex Dwarf starts as a 
stripped version of the original that adds numerous touches, moaning gasps, rattling sounds to the unwavering backbeat. Soft Cell recorded nonstop ecstatic dancing in a brisk one week period after the original plan, a project with several tracks co-written by Donald Fagan, then finishing his debut solo album, The Nightfly, collapsed amid contract legalities. Thorne produced the EP in succession with titles by Albania, B-Movie, their re-recorded Nowhere Girl, Holly Beth Vincent, Nina Hagen, and The The, Uncertain Smile, a, a seven-inch on some bizarre. Uh, nonstop ecstatic dancing is housed in a standard 12-inch sleeve with a photo of Soft Cell leaning into colored fixtures in the shape of musical notes. The photo on the back cover, credited to one Josh, shows the duo standing outside a peep parlor. Ashworth photographed the front cover amid 1982 visual assignments for Annabelle Lamb, The Associates, The Clash, Their Rock the Casbah 7-inch, and Monsoon. Soft Cell lifted what as a single backed with So, an exclusive instrumental with a fuzzy synth pattern in A minor and a mid-tempo dance beat overlaid with vibe tones. What reached number three in the UK, number six in Ireland, and number 10 in Israel? Soft Cell mimed what on the August 19th broadcast of Top of the Pops, which aired their segment between numbers by Duran Duran, Save a Prayer, and Dexie's Midnight Runners, whose current UK hit, Come on Eileen, became a juggernaut of the second British invasion. Nonstop ecstatic dancing reached number six on the UK albums chart. Mark and the Mambas. Between the promotion of nonstop erotic cabaret and the completion of ecstatic dancing, Amon formed Mark and the Mambas, an experimental side project with Da Da mastermind Matt Johnson and Leeds DJ Annie Hogan. They issued their first single, Fun City, backed with Lee's Take It, Shake It, in March 1982 on Some Bazaar, which issued the band's first album, Untitled, that September. Fun City appears on a 12-inch version of Soft Self Say Hello, Wave Goodbye single. And um, I did a little bit of writing on this over the weekend, although it's still kind of just um, in kind of the intermediate stage and haven't really uh, written about the albums yet. But uh, here's... Okay, Mark and the Mambas were an English cabaret goth band led by singer-musician Mark Amon, conducted as a side project while he was still a member of Soft Cell. The project yielded two double albums on Some Bazaar during 1982 and 1983. And then um, I'll be right back. You can read, read what I wrote about them.
The Art of Falling Apart. Soft Cell released their second album, The Art of Falling Apart, in January 1983 on Some Bazaar and Sire. The set contains an LP with eight Almond Ball numbers, plus a two-track 12-inch with Hendrix Medley and the original Martin. And the, and the, um, I should say the, uh, and another, <clears throat> of course it's an original, it's an original unless otherwise stated. Um, Like it's quite it's quite self evident that Hendrix medley is not going to be an original. So. <laughs> Musically, the album ranges from up tempo numbers about decadence, such as uh, "Forever the Same," "Heat," and the title track, to balladic suburban vignettes like "Where the Heart Is" and "Kitchen Sink Drama." Select numbers, um, such as "Heat" and "Numbers," toy with. Um, Okay, I have a bit of a goof there. I meant to say, um, I meant to say numbers and baby doll. Toy with odd progressions and cryptic sonic layers. Yeah, I was I was thinking of um Oh, uh, those of you who've had problems on um WordPress with um uh, with um ending with ending quotations getting slanted the wrong way particularly like if you have them inside of um, parentheses or whatnot. Um, the way around that is to, instead of using a closing quotation, use two apostrophes, yeah. Like you can, if, if, if there's nothing um, like, if it isn't, if like, like this one, I can just use a closing quotation, but, um, because it's not next to um, uh, a, pr a a parenthesis, but um, it's not closed. But um, but this one, um, I have to use two apostrophes, or else it would, um, or else this would be slanted left rather than right. Yeah. You know? Select numbers such as numbers and. Okay, I and then suddenly I I ended up select cuts. I ended up in like an awkward scenario where where numbers would would normally be a, a, a fitting word to use, but it's kind of awkward when this when the first example I end up using is titled numbers. It's, so to kind of avoid. Yeah, I wrote this just like. Uh, 12 hours ago. I, I'm on, on a really uh, messed up. You are, around this time of year, I, I tend to sleep during the day. I, I'm i kind of on like a 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. sleeping pattern right now. It's it's just, it's, it's something that happens around the holidays with me. Um... Musically, the album ranges from up-tempo numbers about decadence to balladic suburban vignettes, select cuts, numbers, baby doll, toy with odd progressions, and cryptic sonic layers. Forever the Same at over five minutes is a brassy up-tempo vamp in D minor with lyrics about a reckless hedonist, a dead-end assembly worker, and deadbeat dad, whose weekends involve drunken, spendthrift barroom exploits. Where the Heart Is at four and a half minutes is a mid-tempo ballad with a wavy synth line composed of major sevenths in G and F. No, 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 no. Almond, in a tender tone, addresses an adolescent in the midst of growing pains and filial discontent, which impacts the parents differently, as Mark elucidates on the chorus. 
Mother loves to be concerned Using lessons that she learned Fathers never understand When children have the upper hand Numbers at almost five minutes is a medium slow lurch with squirting synth tones in F against a stop start rhythmic pattern. The bridge in C major seven has falling flute tones um, over the same lurching pace. Very kind of faint flute like tones. Midway, marimbas and percussion. Midway, marimbas and percussive bursts flank the unrelenting, the unrelenting backing track. Heat, at over six minutes, is a melodramatic number with a tense rhythmic pulse overlaid with dark piano and modulating minor keys rooted in E. In the lyrics, Almond confronts a troubled friend, an apparent gadabout who um, uses up bodies like cigarettes. Kitchen sink drama at almost four minutes is a mid-tempo cabaret number with a stately piano motif in C and airy torch singing. Almond examines a housewife who flirts with the paper boy while her husband is at work. The chorus shakes her facade. She's in a fantasy. It's not so hard to see that she is living a lie. Along a chime-laden ivory slope, capped with a synthesized sitar refrain. Or maybe that's more like a, like a stylophone sound, like a synthesized stylophone sound. It's got a real kind of warm buzz to it. A warm, troubly buzz. Midway, the theme undergoes a chamber variation with booming timpani. Don't, 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 don't. Baby Doll at 6 minutes and 44 seconds is a dark, droning, contorted number with a tritone progression. Um, a minor, um, F. Dun, 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 dun. Composed of deep bass and tumbling percussion marked with tambourine and mixed synth tones, brass and choral. The lyrics concern an unhappy burlesque dancer who works the peat parlors to support her abusive, drug-addled keeper. Loving You, Hating Me at over four minutes is a mid-tempo number, mid number about one-way love with a perky synth bass figure, primarily in C, overlaid with lush synths, airy vocals, and pained, elongated syllables. Almond elucidates the subject in the following two lines. It's the other side of love. It's the side that you don't want to see. The Art of Falling Apart at five minutes is a frenetic up-tempo number about the physical prices of vices. About the physical price of vices. I was trying to avoid sounding too, I don't know, clever right there. The verses have a descending synth ostinato, have a descending synth bass ostinato in G minor um, against a pounding dance beat, overlaid with fuzzy synth keys. Almond spirals upward on the winding chorus in C minor, while gasping, It's the holding together, together forever. Midway, fuzz tones spill on a five-note piano figure. Hendrix Medley, at over ten minutes, renders Hey Joe as a mid-tempo lurch with a jagged five-note synth pattern um, adorned with fuzzy overlays, wiggly vibe tones, and Almond's melodramatic delivery of the subject's intent to shoot his wife and her lover. This sags at four minutes in into Purple Haze, presented here with layered neon synth tones in G and wavering vowels.
Martin at over 10 minutes is an up-tempo vamp with a sprinting, fuzzy synth pattern in G minor. It tells the tale of an awkward, haunted boy who has too many nightmares and watches too many creepy films. Martin, in Amon's estimation, is far too pale and far too frail to be a normal boy. Later lines about hallucinations and morbid dreams imply suicide ideation. Sessions took place in August-September 1982 at Camden Cell, where Thorne co-produced The Art of Falling Apart ahead of albums by Kit Hain and Canadian singer Sherry Keehan. Ball handles all the instruments apart from torch trumpeter John Gatchall. Yeah, there I mean, that's that. No, 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 no. Gatchall, a one-time member of Gotham and Ten Wheel Drive, with numerous jazz funk credits. Yeah, um, I've profiled, uh, Ten Wheel Drive did one of my favorite albums in 1969. They, they were uh, led by uh, Gina Rayvan, um, a legendary figure, once of uh, like um, Ginger and the Gold, uh, uh, <clears throat> Goldie and the Gingerbreads, one of the first ever um, self-contained female rock bands. And um, yeah, uh, Ten Wheel Drive did a great, uh, did, did a fantastic Trying to avoid using that G word, <laughs> did a did a did a very or I should say a very elaborate, lavish 1969 brass rock album in the vein of Chicago Blood, Sweat and Tears with really melodramatic, torchy like numbers. Huh? That that kind of torchy element, that kind of theatrical element to to a lot of brass rock is one of the reasons why it's like one of my favorite styles of music to emerge from from the US and, and, ulti and ultimately also a lot of the UK as well during that period. Um, I've, been, I've been known on the internet for promoting the style quite heavily, promoting, promoting as a, and like, uh, un, un helping to unearth some of the lesser known acts in the, in the vein. Like um, I, I profiled Gotham in a video like, start, like three years ago um, yeah, a song they did written by Billy Vera, years before he had his own um, come up and yeah, that really belting slow number, twelve years ago. Yeah, go go uh, look look for that in my um, old song reviews. Um, and um, yeah, the video drew some comments from from parties close to the band. Yeah, Gotham also had had ties to uh, Gas Mask, an earlier brass rock band. Um, one of whose members uh, commented, left a left some information here on Jazz Rock Soul. Yeah, the um, Gas Mask page is completed. Um, the Gotham page is almost completed. It still needs some work though. It still needs. I might do um, I I might do a stream months down the line where um, some of these lesser known like one album acts where I combine them by letter. Or by genre or by nation, yeah. Like there were a lot of G great. There there were a lot of really really interesting G American G one offs in 1972. Gotham, Guns and Butter, um, Good God, Goliath. Yeah, maybe each did each one album that year. Might might do them all all in one stream. Um, Okay, uh, Gatchel also had uh, numerous jazz funk credits, uh, more more recent to 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 this to our falling apart, such as um, albums by Art Weber, Grover Washington Jr., Idris Muhammad, and Lalo Schifrin.
I wonder how they get some of these ideas. Amon designed the falling apart visual package, which shows the duo with their backs down in cracked masks in a sandy setting amid pink sundries. Pink, various objects, photos, other masks. Looks like some kind of like chiffon type stuff. Tools, like a tat, like a hammer maybe. Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell, like jewelry, like Bakelite beads or something, um, cracked masks, little pearls and such. North American copies have a brown-orange tint with the UK inner sleeve painted eyes as the front cover. Yeah, I, 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 just in a, another photo from the same, same exact shoot. The chocolate or title fonts and mask theme are mirrored on the LP labels and inner sleeves, which feature six bald cracked face doodles by Hugh Feather. Where the Heart Is appeared in November 1982 as an advanced single, backed with the non-album It's a Mugs Game, an upbeat, an upbeat number in G minor with billowing brass and slippery synth set to a moat. set to a Motown beat. It's another song about reckless party-going youth. Here, the subject is a teen drunkard who knocks up a girl in his backseat. Or maybe I could say a teen lush. Are some of these t terms like kind of like age-specific? Like, do you, can, you, can you really call like a teen who drinks all, like a lush? I, 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 I don't, I'm not sure like, like, like if, the, if this kid is like, I don't know, 16, 17. Is, can someone really be like a, like a confirmed, like hardcore alcoholic at that age? Or I, I'd have to check the etymology on some of these words, like a teen. Like if some of these words have more kind of like middle age connotations, like, like someone who's been drinking for a year, who's been like heavy drinking for many years versus, um, I, it's hard to imagine um, a, a teen could have a problem that intense. Could have a pro could have nearly as as bad of a, a, a drinking problem as a, like say a a forty year old man who's just been consuming pints of alcohol on a daily basis, and, or heck, a, a, a middle aged woman for that matter. You know, women have a much lower threshold for alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, guys, uh, don't let your lady drink more than half of what you drink on a given night. Uh, their bodies do not have the tolerance for it. That's just the facts. Yeah. Um, sorry, but sometimes, um, sometimes biology does discriminate along, along the sexes. And um, that's another reason why uh, they tend to set drinking limits of a certain age because alcohol um, I, I can like stunt the developing mind yeah um, I sorry for the digression but I one of the really boring a lot of my like boring freelance writing assignments have involved Articles on drugs and alcohol not not a favorite topic of mine, and I I'm a teetotaler myself. I've I've I have I've I've only drank on a few occasions in my life, um, and so I I have a very low tolerance myself. Um, I think the last time I had a drink, I had some like red wine at back in January of 2015 uh, um, at a restaurant, and um, I. Uh, but so I, I kind of know, because of those assignments, I know more about those topics than I, I, I otherwise would. Um, yeah. uh, okay.
Where is it? Here, the su okay, the subject of It's a Mugs game is a teen drunkard or, or lush who knocks up a girl in his back seat and provokes his father with hard rock records, a deep purple in rock, Led Zeppelin II, both name checked in the lyrics, at maximum volume. Soft Cell mimed Where the Heart Is on the December 9th broadcast of Top of the Pops, which aired their segment before the Yuletide medley, Peace on Earth, Little Drummer Boy, the 1977 duet between David Bowie and the late Bing Crosby that, on its fifth anniversary, was issued as a single. Numbers followed the album as a second single, backed with the exclusive Barriers, a minimal rhythmless ballad in G with rising twos, composed of soft synth sustain um, and light strands of sax and marimba. Huh, I guess I kind of foresaw a little bit more detail. Than that. Comma right there. In the lyrics, Almond recalls a lost love. Despite his claims that there was nothing, not a feeling, as, as you glanced back from the door, he admits, I still have your smile burned into my mind. The Art of Falling Apart reached number five on the UK albums chart. In the US, Sire extracted Loving You, Hating Me, and Heat as A-sides. And here's another interesting feather illustration. Yeah, he was really taking on kind of a trademark style, recognizable. Separate projects. With the second Soft Cell album completed by late 1982, Almond and Ball spent most of 1983 on separate projects. Almond renewed Mark and the Mambas for a second album, Torment and uh, Toreros, a two record set recorded between January and May 1982 with a revised lineup. Mark plays guitar and keyboards on this release, which features Annie Hogan on piano, harpsichord, farfisa organ, and vocals, along with bassist Lee Jenkinson, readist Steve Sherlock, and drummer Frank Want, aka Fotis, plus the Venomous Chamber Quartet. Johnson, then readying the first The The album, Soul Mining, plays guitar in an auxiliary role, and as you may have read um, as I stepped up, stepped away, on that Mark and the Mambas page, yeah. Um, this was, uh, this, this, the Mambas involved Johnson before he got the, the off the ground, when he was still involved in the gadgets. The song Torment is a co-write between Almond and The Glove the art pop duo of Susie and the Banshees bassist Steve Severin and Cure frontman Robert Smith, then Moonlighting as a Banshee. Ball recorded his only proper solo album, In Strict Tempo, released in November 1983 on Some Bizarre. Side A, Over, features short songs with select backing by Genesis Peorage of Throbbing Gristle and Psychic TV and Gavin Friday of The Virgin Prunes. Side B, here, has uh, subtitled here, has three numbers, including the 12-minute American Stories. Flutist Virginia Ast Astley, uh, Pete Townsend's sister-in-law, um, adds select backing along with members of the Venomets. Bull also added keyboards and drum programming on two songs, Animation and Crackdown. Um, 
on The Cracktown, the 1983 Some Bizarre release by industrial rock pioneers Cabaret Voltaire. Yeah, that's another one of those um, solo albums by a, by a band member where, not known for being a vocalist to, where it's like the music's good because, you know, and the music has like the, the normal uh, quality that you come to expect from him as, as like one of the creative forces within, within the band he's, he's famous for. And yet you think, hmm, maybe he could have like hired someone else to do the vocals it's kind of kind of like a i don't know like kind of like the first steve howe solo album comes to mind or mike rutherford's um, acting very strange comes to mind or yeah. um yeah the music's the music's good though uh a lot of it anyway. This Last Night in Sodom. Soft Cell released their third album, This Last Night in Sodom, in March 1983 on Some Bizarre and Sire. The songs are mostly upbeat and layered with dense percussion and a balance of electronic and traditional instruments. Despite the liveliness, most of the lyrics deal with grim topics. The title comes from a line in Slave to This. <clears throat> Mr. Self-Destructed Over Three Minutes is an up-tempo number with a blaring synth brass intro in G set to a Motown beat. Almond delivers rapid-fire lines about a shady hotshot whose rise occurs in tandem with his self-destruction. <clears throat> self the track sprints along loudly with rippling, swirling Hammond organ and Mark's multi-tracked backing vocals. Slave to This, at over five minutes, is a dark track with a deep bass dirge set to a pensive rhythm. Lyrically, it captures the musings of a sadist with similarities to Ball's character in the original Sex Dwarf video, uh, such as like indicated like in the line, meat rack and ruin, boarded up and beaten up. Um... I, uh... Some of these lyrics, I just lyric, these lines I, I quote, I copy and paste from like the lyric from the the site. Little Rough Rhinestone at four and a half minutes is an is an up tempo track with a winding progression um, between F, C, G, and D. Um, so kind of. Um, like roots and fifths, like shifting um, up a step. Kept by a honking, far corded refrain. <laughs> Musically, the arrangement weds elements of industrial post punk, mainly killing joke in the thick bass dirgy guitar, and tribal-esque drumming. Maybe I should just call that kind of like post-punk drumming, tribal-esque, because it's not technically tribal, but it got, it, it approximates some of the, the those types of fills kind of in those sort of tumbling, like, like often um, kind of, kind of like cymbal-free feel, or, or kind of like limited metal. The metal might be kind of channel or something but it's like this boom 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 yeah joy division and killing joke come to mind when i think of that drumming um i i almost used the phrase that that what's that one phrase burundi beat uh but that's like that refers to a very like that that adam and the ants and bow wow wow we're using but it wasn't quite that beat and that i think that 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 name the burundi beat or whatever it refers to a very specific type of beat yeah i i, I could have been mis mis misidentifying if i use that phrase um okay the arrangement weds elements of industrial post-punk namely killing joke and the cuter side of soft cells earlier materials uh such as in the upbeat vibe and bell tones 
The lyrics concern a lonely boy who can no longer play make-believe, once the source of his friends. So he's kind of like a boy who's lonely and has coped with an imaginary world of friends and is now struggling with um, adjusting to adulthood. Um, and, and which is, um, and he's having like emotional complications making that adjustment because um, he used to rely on this world of make-believe, but now he, he's at an age where he just can't really do that anymore. He can't really, he, he just doesn't believe in it at all and he can't really, uh, you know, even, even kind of force those thoughts to, to get through the day. Meet Murder, My Angel at four and a half minutes is a medium up-tempo track with layered... Hope I don't use that phrase, airy vocals, too often. Meet Murder My Angel at uh, four minutes and 40 seconds, or almost 39 seconds, is a medium up tempo track with layered, airy vocals and a deep bass pattern, primarily in D minor, set to a dense rhythmic, rhythmic pattern of real and electronic drums. The lyrics, sung from the mind of a serial killer, explore the rationale behind his crimes. You've arrived at the moment to cross over the threshold, is one telling line. Um, the Best Way to Kill at 4 minutes 43 seconds is an up-tempo post-punk rock track in A with trebly distorted guitar over a pounding beat and thick, perky bass line, capped recurrently by a descending bell tone refrain. Almond opens the line Almond opens with the line, dishonesty breeds like poison in an unhealed wound and drops metaphors of a man's ruthless rise in the business world. Hence the title, yeah. The best way to kill seemed to be like a metaphor for how to like really kill it in the world of business. Um, how to get past everyone rise to the top. La Squalita at seven minutes is a medium slow melodramatic number with deep bass and tribal drumming overlaid with exotic strings, percussive sundries, and lilting vocalese. Almond's theatrical vocals drop lurid hints of the events at La Squalita, a then active New York City night spot. Down in the subway at uh, 2 minutes 51 seconds is an upbeat neo-rockabilly number with booming drums, sprightly organ, and jovial vocables over a three-note piano boogie pattern, elements that subvert the song's grim references to suicide. Surrender to a Stranger is a medium up-tempo number with layered drums and a piping four-note synth brass riff, which opens a tight, contorted ostinato. Um, bum, bum, F sharp, C sharp, E, E, E flat, G. The song is about a businessman who engages in seedy sex acts, possibly with prostitutes, at one-night hotels. 
Soul Inside at 4 minutes 25 seconds is an up-tempo number with brassy synth, faint organ, and a two-note bass pattern. B flat, F. Against a layered, snappy dance beat, Almond in an airy croon sings of mixed emotions. There are times when my mind is an explosion of feelings. That's one quite loaded line there. Where Was Your Heart When You Needed It Most at Over Five Minutes is a heavy mid-tempo number with a plunging bass line in G minor and thick Hammond notes, um, hammered sixes. Yeah. Almond observes the emotional predicament of a girl who endured a sexual assault while intoxicated. Soft Self Self produced this last night in Sodom in the winter of 1983-84 with engineer Michael Johnson. A sound man on titles by Cozy Powell, Deridi Column, John Lord, Joy Division, uh, Closer, uh, Michael Mantler, Nash the Slash, and The Skids. Most recently, he engineered New Order's breakthrough second album, Power, Corruption, and Lies. Bell plays bass, guitar, and keyboards on Sodom, which features guest appearances by session saxophonist Gary Barnacle, uh, once of uh, Leisure Process, and Dave's wife, and Venomous violinist Gina Hughes Ball. Ginny also appears on the 1984 Banshees EP The Thorn, which features chamber arrangements of prior Banshees tracks. Oh, yikes. Kind of hitting the wrong key there. This last night in Sodom is housed in a bright red single slit in a bright uh, a bit cumbersome like duh. I should say all sleeves are single unless I state gatefold. In a bright red sleeve with gold hand lettering and assorted doodles, including sketches of a knife and two hands, one closed with a spider and the word peace, one open with an eyeball and the word hate. Yeah, peace, closed, open, eyeball, hate. The inner sleeve has lyrics scrawled in black ink on white paper in various handwriting styles. Oh, at the tip of the knife it reads, my hand but not my mind. Soul Inside appeared six months ahead of Sodom in September 1983 as an advanced single, backed with You Only Live Twice. Um, Backed with You Only Live Twice, a synth ballad with a cascading organ riff and lyrics that explain the title's premise in the first stanza, One Life for Yourself and One for Your Dreams. An extended mix of Soul Inside at nearly 12 minutes appears on 12 inch with a third track, um, the 007 theme, a near unrecognizable take with booming drums, organ, and fuzzy e bow guitar. All three songs appear on a double seven inch with a fourth track, Her Imagination, a slow droning ballad about an aging woman and her regrets about not fulfilling the showbiz dreams of her youth. That was my interpretation anyway, uh, from what I was able to draw from the somewhat uh, shrouded lines. Down in the Subway appeared as the second advanced single in February 1984, backed with Disease and Desire, a harmonized bell-laden rhythmic dirge with lyrics that allude to the AIDS epidemic. The 12-inch includes a third track, Born to Lose, a peppy cover of the 1977 song by Johnny Thunder's Heartbreakers. This last night in Sodom reached number 12 on the UK Albums chart. Post Soft Cell. One month before This Last Night in Sodom hit shelves, Almond and Ball announced the end of their partnership. Almond launched his solo career with Vermin and Ermine, 
recorded with his new backing band, The Willing Sinners, with Annie Hogan, and released in October 1984 on Some Bazaar. He followed this with the 1985 release, Stories of Johnny, the 1986 EPs, A Woman's Story and Violent Silence, and the 1987-88 albums, Mother Fist and Her Five Daughters and The Stars We Are. The last Bond hits with Tears Run Rings and the Gene Pitney cover, Something's Gotten Hold of My Heart, which topped the UK singles chart after Pitney surfaced to re-record the song as a duet with Almond. Ball and his wife formed Other People, which issued the 1984 single Have a Nice Day, backed with Another Day, Another Dollar, on Arcadia Records. He then formed the dance pop trio English Boy on the L Lover Ranch, which issued the 1987-88 singles The Man in Your Life and Sex Vigilante on New Rose Records. In 1988, he co-founded The Grid, an electronic dance trio that released five albums and multiple singles between 1990 and 1995 and reactivated in the late 2000s. Soft Cell reunited in... Um, 2000 for a series of European live dates. They cut a new song, God Shaped Hole, for the 2001 Some Bizarre compilation, I'd Rather Shout at a Returning Echo Than Kid Someone's Listening. Their reunion album, Cruelty Without Beauty, appeared in 2002 on the Cooking Vinyl label. It contains their long-awaited recording of the Four Seasons song, The Night, which Soft Cell originally considered in 1981 before choosing Tainted Love for their second single. The Night reached number 39 on the UK singles chart. Soft Cell reunited again in 2018 for, for a UK tour and released two new songs, Northern Lights and Guilty Cause I Say You Are. In 2021, Almond and Ball did a five-day UK tour to mark the 40th anniversary of Nonstop Erotic Cabaret. And here's a discography of their albums, um, their EPs and singles, and archival releases, and the sources of this article, Discogs, the English S Albums Directory. Um, this is how it looks when you're not signed into RYM. Um... And this is more how it looks when you get an RYM account and sign in. Maybe you can see the uh, the GIF if my face isn't covering it. Um, of all the, the S bands. And S is the biggest letter in the English albums, in the English artists alphabet. It, 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 S tends to be one of the most, one of the most common first letters in band names, yeah. Page five, or you can go back to start on page one, going alphabetically from SA to as far as S can go, SU, SY, yeah. Yeah, on the first page to see albums by Sad Lovers and Giants, Sarde, Sailor. And on up over to acts like Sweet, yeah on the last page. Anyway, yes, um, Soft Cell, um, a band that just came out with a bundle of energy and invention and just uh, left a lot of music in a very short time frame. I mean, it's amazing how, how their releases spanned like like 1980 and, and really like above ground, like 1981 to just the start of 1984. But uh, the most of it was recorded just within like a two-year period. And most of it was like like in the can by late 82 i mean the art of falling apart and and after that they were largely working separately and then they just regrouped to do uh the sodom album and um yeah and that so that last album's still kind of growing on me it's it's really kind of dense and uh, the songs, it, uh, Amon got, got a lot more kind of wordy as the band went along. Um, it, it's almost it kind, kind of in a way they, they were just, as a duo, were just kind of brimming with too many ideas between them and they needed to go their separate ways and just kind of really stretch out. Um, Amon in particular, like, uh, explored a lot more varied musical styles in his solo career, um, which I've come to respect more and more over the years. Um. Interestingly, he had a lot of the same influences that David Sylvian had. 
Although his his, his the general tone of his solo work has been a lot more varied. Um, they were they were both influenced by uh, Jacques Brel. They were both influenced by Scott Walker. They of course David Bowie and such um, like Chanson, um, cab cabaret, a lot of European influence. Um, it, they both uh, peaked in in fame with their with their respective bands at the same time. Both went solo around the same time. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, see the page on Jazz Rock Soul for any time and for Soft Cell and many other artists. As a matter of fact, now that I've, I'm done editing this, I am going to move this onto the first page of Jazz Rock Soul. And uh, today's date is the 19th. So... Oops, I forgot to uh, change the change the uh, letters, but um, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's amazing that I that I personally didn't hear um saw, hear about soft cell till um till the spring of nineteen eighty seven when I was almost fourteen years old because um. They never got played on MTV, and um, the one book that I was using is my New Wave Bible at the time, the New Music, written in 1980 by two Australian rock writers. I think Glenn A. Baker being one of them, and uh, it came out in 1980, so just a little bit too early to include Soft Cell, or to really to go much into the um, electro pop genre aside from just some of the the uh, pioneers like Gary Newman and, and John Fox. Um, and I will, right after I'm done, uh, tr try and make a better, like like more of a frontal photo collage for this page. Okay, and so here we have the acts that have been profiled over the last nine weeks of streaming. Soft Cell, Curved Air, Japan, Camel, Electric Light Orchestra, Renaissance Chicago, The Who, Gentle Giant, and uh, Bebop Deluxe have all been profiled, yeah. And next week, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might do XTC 1977 to 1984, do, do like XTC in two parts. Um, at some point, I might start doing two of these a week, like one like like more kind of like well-known act interspersed with one or two, or maybe like a group of lesser knowns. Like um, I could do this, like some of the other post psych acts I could do pretty soon include um, Audience, um, Green Slade, Steeler's Wheel, Jonesy, yeah, um, Spyro Gyra, yeah, like like two to three album acts in the from the early seventies, yeah, and um, there have been quite a few. Um, requests for me to do the Thin Lizzy one, um, which I might do in two installments they, because they did like 12 albums. It's um, I, The page is, is like about 80% written, but I need to still go in and, and do some song descriptions and stuff on there. Um, I'm surprised there haven't been more call-outs for uh, Deep Purple yet. I've got, that, I, that, that page is in a similar status. Um, but um, because Susan ha seems to be intent on just making me the deep purple guy, even though I've covered hundreds upon hundreds of acts in, in my YouTube channel, it's only the deep purple stuff that she promotes to like a wider general YouTube audience. And um, I think that that deep purple short is still the most viewed thing I've put up this year, um, <laughs> eight months after I uploaded it. You know. Anyway, um, and so um yeah and so jazzrocksoul.com and follow follow my substack where i um post um extracted um portions of completed portions of various articles some in development some 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 uh complete um on um oh about twice twice weekly and um and uh, support me on Patreon to um, help uh, this mission, allow me to spend as much time on this as possible. 
And uh, yeah, and in with the goal of getting this site, this database overall, ready for the broader scope of the internet um, in about three years. Yeah. Five years going with uh, about a thousand words written each day and about three more years before I think this site, this database should be ready more for the broader, to be uh, getting up there and like uh, competing with um, some of the major databases that are already established online. This being um, the internet's first holistic, uh, objective, facts-driven, um, database that deep dives each artist from each, you know, hundreds, thousands of artists from around the world from the late 60s to the mid 80s. And you can read about the basic mission of this, of the database here. Yeah. And go here for albums, articles, and links. Yes. And so until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel trend maximalist, signing off.